Welcome to another video in the SOLIDWORKS Formula SAE tutorial series. In this tutorial, we will be following up on the first frame modeling video. Many of you emailed me excellent questions and I would like to address some of them here. This is the frame as we left it after the first video. Several of you sent me emails regarding the rear of the frame here where you can see there's actually tabs that I didn't talk about in the original video. Modeling the tabs is relatively simple, but there's one important thing to remember. We should reference the tabs to the actual suspension points themselves instead of the frame because this allows us to modify the suspension points later and have everything on the car changed to those modified suspension points. The first thing I'm going to do is create a plane that goes through the suspension point as parallel to the ground plane. Once again, make sure to reference the actual suspension point instead of any part on the frame so that if you change suspension points, everything else changes with it. As an example, let's run through the process of modeling one of these suspension tabs on the front side of the frame. Here I've highlighted the A-arm sketch and the sketch I made for the tab that goes through the plane we just created. Now let's look at the feature that actually creates this tab. To create the actual tab feature, there's a couple critical numbers. The first number you need to know is the size of the bearing or spherical that you're going to be using. This dictates the offset number right here. The second number you need to know is the actual thickness of the tab you're going to be designing, direction one. That's it for creating one tab, but there's a few things I should mention about it before we move on. You will notice that I gave myself plenty of extra length on the tab as it intersects the frame. This will give us some wiggle room during the actual build process when we cope and weld these to the frame. You'll also notice that the tabs don't line up exactly perfectly with the tops of the frame tubes. This is by design because remember the tabs are referenced directly to the suspension points. Any little errors like this that don't line up in the SOLIDWORKS model will be taken up in the welding. Once we've developed all the tabs on the frame, we can actually go back and use these sketches and save them as blocks. This will allow us to create a drawing with all the tabs on the frame and then we can use them as templates for coping or laser cutting. To create a block from the sketch of a tab, first open up the blocks toolbar. To create a block, just select the sketch and then select this button right here, save sketch as block. Creating drawing for your tabs is then relatively simple. Just open up a new part file make a drawing in your new drawing once again open up the blocks toolbar this time select insert block then browse to the location where you've saved all your frame tab blocks using blocks like this is a simple way to create an entire sheet full of frame tab templates that's it for creating frame tabs and templates, but now I'd like to talk about one more feature that is really beneficial, especially when it comes to making the frame. Some of you may already be aware of this, but SOLIDWORKS contains a built-in design journal that allows you to document all the changes you make to a model. This is especially beneficial for the frame, as many groups and many different system designers have to make changes to it in order to accommodate their parts. This feature is normally hidden in the current version of SOLIDWORKS. In order to access it, right click on the top of the tree manager on the part and go to hidden tree items. Under design binder, find the design journal. Here I haven't opened it yet so it says empty. Click open. The design journal provides a perfect way for documenting the changes we make to a model. Here this is the blank design journal as it's just pulled from SOLIDWORKS and has a few basic things that are already contained within the part document. Here I've added a simple annotation that basically just says what I did today with suspension tabs and saving sketches and blocks. In my experience, the design journal can be extremely beneficial in several ways. First, it can be beneficial to you in that it helps you work through an iterative design process. It can also be beneficial to the rest of the team because it allows them to see the changes that you've made without you actually having to be there. Lastly, you can use these design journals to actually back up your design process when you're talking to design judges at competition. That's it for today's video. I hope that I was able to answer some of the questions you guys sent me. If you have any more comments, questions, or suggestions for future tutorials, 
please email them to sfalkner at solidworks.com.